Estimating errors for contractors lead to an on average 3% reduction in profit margins. Considering average profit margins in construction, 10 to 15% at best, fixing errors in your estimates before you submit them is an easy way to make sure your projects are profitable. Operum is an AI powered estimating and contract management tool with a single goal to help you win more work and deliver it profitably. The product currently has two core features with more coming. Feature number one is that you can upload complex con tender packages consisting of scope of works, contracts, technical specifications, and other documents and quickly turn them into an interactive dashboard so you can see all of the key information like the project overview, the bill of quantities, the contract terms, schedule information, technical specifications, and other constraints and risks you need to be aware of rather than going through hundreds of pages of mostly irrelevant information. Feature number two is that once you've gone ahead and prepared your estimate for the project in Excel, you can then upload your estimate and our AI system will analyze your estimate to give you an overview of comparing against the tender summary and what the client's asking for to check that you've covered anything, that you haven't missed any important gaps. It'll go through every line item in your working, depending how much information you provide and check all activities included or any key activities missing. And then it'll do a quick sanity check against all the rates you've used. So your labor rates, your preliminaries, other rates, any plant and equipment rates, and check if they're reasonable to give you a comprehensive overview. Is your estimate comprehensive? And have you left anything out? And all you have to do is upload it and click analyze. So that's an overview of the first two core features we've built and launched in Opera. As I said, the goal of Operum is to help contractors win more work and deliver it profitably. So those are the first two features we've launched, but we're planning out rolling out more features around this space of estimating contracts and cost control. Because a fundamental belief that we have is that your price and your terms are directly related and you can improve the profitability of your projects by paying attention to both the contract terms, the tender requirements, and the price you prepare. Now I'd like to go through a complete workflow end to end of how you can take your tender documents, turn them into a concise summary, and then once you've prepared an estimate for your project to upload that and to analyze it to identify any gaps, missing items, or potentially calculation errors. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project. This is gonna be a project called High Voltage Terminations for a solar farm. Our client is going to be called Solar Farm Developer. It's going to be in infrastructure located in Melbourne and a medium sized project. So once we create a project, the first step is then to open the project and then we need to upload our tender document. So as an example for this project, I have a scope of works, which is just a simple description of the work the client's looking for. So a couple of pages here, a subcontract agreement, which is the terms and conditions that they would sign us up to if we were to win the project and technical specifications. Now, this is a relatively small tender package, but our analysis works on huge tender packages of hundreds of pages, which can save you a lot of time in reviewing and digesting all the information the client has provided. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload our tender documents. So the three documents we got given, just drag them and drop them. And once they've uploaded, they're stored successfully. They say they've uploaded, we can simply click run tender analysis. Now, depending on the size of the documents and the amount of information you provide, this analysis can take anywhere between five, 10, or even up to 15 minutes. Again, depending on the size of the documents. And so far, the analysis is only limited to written documents. So if you upload drawings, images, or other documents like that, it's not going to work effectively. As the analysis progresses, you'll be able to see a status indicator at the bottom showing how far through the analysis is, but overall it should take anywhere between five to 10 minutes as it goes through our AI analysis system. Once the analysis has run and been completed, I'll then see a structured summary of the project with all the key information that we're looking for. On the overview tab, I'll be able to see who the client is, if there's a project duration, the location of the project, and the project title. I'll be able to see a summary of the documentation that our client sent us. So in this case, they've sent us a scope of works, which is outlining the overall scope for the 33 kV high voltage terminations, technical specifications, so detailed technical requirements, and a subcontract agreement. 
We get an overview of the project. So the project requires the supply of all labor, materials and equipment for the installation, testing and commissioning of the 33 kV high voltage terminations. There's also got a summary of key inclusions. So supply and install all the 33 kV outdoor and indoor terminations, perform earthing and bonding, conduct all required testing and commissioning, and some key exclusions. So we're not supplying the cables, we're not doing any civil works, we're not responsible for any switchgear connections or SCADA integrations. Now, once I've looked at the overview, I'll then be able to see if the client's provided a bill of quantities. There's two situations that Operum looks at here. If the client has explicitly provided a bill of quantities or a pricing schedule, it'll extract that and show that here. Or if the client hasn't provided a bill of quantities, Operum will derive a bill of quantities from the scope of work. So in this situation, the client hasn't provided a bill of quantities, so it's derived one from the scope of works and it's given us a template pricing schedule to create. So it's got mobilization and demobilization, a line item for project management and supervision. We've got supply and install 33 kV outdoor terminations, and it's got 24 of those. Supply and install the indoor terminations, and it's got 12 of those. Supply and install the surge arresters. If I want, I can also click export to Excel and export this as an Excel file. In addition to this, it's also summarized the key contract terms. So for instance, we're required to have public and product liability insurance, 5% retention, the contract types of fi fixed lump sum, payment terms, warranty periods, and there's liquidated damages of $5,000 per day. It's also showing us any key schedule items, mobilization, outdoor terminations, indoor terminations across this eight week contract, and a summary of all the technical specifications that have been provided, safety requirements, testing requirements, materials, personnel, the relevant standards, environmental controls, and quality control, and finally, any additional constraints and risks we need to be aware of. We can then export that to a PDF if we want to show other people a summary of the tender information. Next, now we've got a summary of the tender documentation. We can go away and prepare our cost estimate for the project. In the future, we're gonna build Operum out so you can actually create your estimates within Operum using similar Excel-like interface. But for now, you have to create your estimates in Excel. So as an example, for this project, I've got an example costing that's been done for this scope of works. And what we're gonna do is gonna now upload this and we're gonna get Operum to analyze these detailed workings. So you can see in the detailed workings, there's a pricing schedule, there's line items for documentation, there's line items for all the different sets of work. They've all, for some, for, so for one of these line items, the outdoor terminations, they've actually provided in the estimate a detailed workings for how this is calculated and a rate. We've got the labor rates that are used and we've got any key exclusions documented that the estimators made when they're doing, when they're putting together estimates. So this is just a basic Excel workbook. You can upload any type of estimate in Excel that you want. The analysis works better if you provide more information and more workings, so there's more things to check against. So next, I'll take my estimate for the project and I'll simply drag and drop that into the estimate document upload. It'll upload and then it's uploaded successfully. Now I can click run estimate analysis. Now you can only run the estimate analysis if you've previously run the tender analysis. It won't work if you don't have a tender summary because it's taking that tender summary, it's comparing the requirements it's identified in the tender documentation you've uploaded, it's comparing it to your workings and it's identifying any gaps. It's also checking your workings for calculation errors, issues with the line items and how your detailed workings are done. Basically, it's comprehensively looking at it to find any sources of how you could have underquoted the job. Like the tender summary, it's gonna take about five to 10 minutes to run properly. Again, depending on the size and complexity of both the tender requirements and the size of your estimate. Once the estimate analysis has run correctly, you'll be taken to the estimate results page. And here you can see an overview of the estimate, comparison against the tender summary, gaps that have been identified in the estimate, detailed review of each line item and the detailed workings, if they've been provided, and a summary of the rates used and a comparison to where they sit in the market. So starting with the overview tab, we can see the current estimate, which was what was shown in the Excel file, was $309,200. Based on the analysis, our AI system believes that there's a total adjustments of $84,000 required and roughly an adjusted price of $393,000. Again, this is just indicative only. It's not a perfect estimate. 
What it believes is that the estimate is understated by over 25% due to critical missing scope, some calculation errors, and significantly underpriced materials and labor. So let's look at what this is being driven by. So the critical actions, so the key things that our analysis has picked up is that there's an incorrect unit rate for outdoor terminations from $3,200 which should be $4,100. So if we look at the estimate file and it's referring to item 2.1. So if I go to item 2.1, which is the 33 kV outdoor terminations, it's got a unit rate of $3,200. And this is in worksheet reference WS01. We can see the correct total should be $4,100. So for whatever reason, it's been an error in transposing the rate, should be $4,100. So that's the first gap it's picked up. And again, as I said, this works with any style of estimating structure or workbook that you use, but it will work best when there's a structured pricing schedule with detailed workings associated with each, and it can check against these. The other item it's picked up is that it believes there's a risk in the rate used for specialist labor. So if I look at worksheet 01, the labor rate used for a HV jointer is $95 an hour, which is below what what our analysis believes is below market rates. So it should be up to about 20% higher. And again, without looking too much at the project specifics, if you're talking about rural, remote Australia doing high voltage electrical work, then yes, I believe $95 an hour does seem relatively low. Also believes that there's a gap in missing scope for third party testing and accreditation, which is driven by the testing commissioning requirements from the scope of works and to verify that if surgeristas and corona rings are included in the termination kits. If not, we need to add a new line item. It's also some strengths and some weaknesses. So if we go to look at the critical gaps, this is where our estimate has been compared against the tender summary to basically check if there's anything the tender documents are asking for that is not in our estimate. So these are the, so our analysis has picked up seven gaps so the first one, for example, is that the underpriced specialist labor and missing remote area loading. So it believes that, so looking at the tender requirements that all terminations must be installed by manufacturer certified personnel. Certification must be not be older than two years and you need HP cable jointers with a minimum five years of experience. On top of that, it's given some additional logic and explanation that the project location is regional New South Wales and requires manufacturer certified HP jointers with five years of experience that it believes that this rate is relatively low, the rate that's used in the estimate, and it can see looking at the preliminaries and overheads that there's no allowance for labor rate uplift or remote area loading. The contractor's overheads don't include anything for remote area loading it. So it believes that there's a gap here for pricing specialist labor and the remote area loading. If we look at Another example of a gap that it's identified is that from looking at the tender requirements, testing and commissioning perform all site acceptance testing, including insulation resistance, partial discharge testing, VFL testing, and provision of certified test personnel. And it can't find in the workings, the preliminaries, the overheads, or any bundled items, it can't find any allowance for this testing. So it's put in there a lump sum figure of $12,000 to cover this. So basically it's found seven gaps that it believes are missing from the estimate, the surge resters and corona rings, the BIM model integration for the as builds, the incorrect copper earth sizes, missing provision of spare termination kits and inadequate allowance for QA documents. Basically it's looked at our tender summary, the requirements our client was asking us to price and then it's identified these explicit gaps. It believes these items are missing from the estimate and we need to update our estimate to include them. Now, the next tab of our analysis are our line items. So these are detailed checks against every line item in our pricing schedule and the workings we've provided. It'll look at, for example, this line item. So this is 1.1 mobilization and site setup. We have an allowance for $5,000, but there's no detailed workings. So it's saying, Mobilization and site setup, it believes there's a missing value of four and a half thousand dollars. Again, the analysis hasn't won't work that well if you don't provide any detailed workings. It's just ballpark figures if there's no detailed workings. So it said believes that there's mobilization allowed, but it doesn't believe that there's enough for project management and supervision time, site cleanup and demobilization, materials, and quality assurance documentation. Again, the more detailed workings you provide, the better the analysis will be. It's gone and done this. 
for every single line item in the pricing schedule. So if we look at one where there's more detailed workings, for example, 2.1, the outdoor termination kits, we go down to line item 2.1, 33 kV outdoor termination stress cone type. It believes there's $47,000 of missing scope. Components found, HV jointer, HV jointer assistant, electrician, so it's got the labor components, the materials, the plant and equipment. So if we look at this working sheet, it's extracted the materials, the labor and equipment, these detailed workings. It believes, again, this is picking up the same issue it's identified previously, that the allowance for the labor is below market and approximately a 20% shortfall. There's certain materials that aren't explicitly allowed for, including the surge arresters, the corona rings, and the spare termination kits. Again, this was also picked up in the gap analysis, and it believes that there's a calculation error with worksheet, calculates a cost of $4,100 per termination, but the schedule uses a rate of $3,200. That's that gap we looked at, pre that's the calculation error we looked at previously that was driving this. So, that's an example of a line item where you have detailed workings. Again, the more workings, the more information you provide, the more justification for your estimate, the better the analysis is gonna be. And the final tab of our analysis is just a summary of the rates. It looks at the rates that are used for preliminaries, labor, different activities, and basically compares these to what it thinks the market rate should be. Again, this is the, the rate analysis is very high level, very generic. It'll flag obviously incorrect things such as if you had, for example, in Australia, $20 an hour for an electrician, where just clearly the rate is incorrect and not appropriate. So as I said, that's the first revision of our software. It's only got those two core features, which is summarizing complex tender documents and analyzing your construction estimates, like spell checking for estimates to ensure you never underquote a job again. Goal and what we're working towards is building out an AI enhanced estimating contract management platform to help you win more work and deliver it profitably. If you are interested in the software, interested in trying it, make sure to sign up, give it a go. But also, if you've got any suggestions on things you'd like to see, problems you'd like us to try and solve, feel free to send me an email at tim at operum.io.